वेलकम टू ए पी जी पाठशाला दिस इज डॉक्टर मृन्मय प्रामाणिक आई टीच कॉम्पेटिव इंडियन लैंग्वेज एंड लिटरेचर एट द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कैलकाटा दिस टूडे विल डिस्कस अ मॉड्यूल फ्रॉम रीडिंग न्यू लिटरेचर इन इंग्लिश एंड द मॉड्यूल इज ऑन दलित एंड ट्राइबल लिटरेचर इन इंग्लिश ट्रांसलेशन translation in my understanding is a claim claim of one's right one's identity one's voice and one's existence translation always helps to form a new space in another culture another world other than the culture or world from which the original text has been emerged india has uh, for uh, then a century old the lit literature and uh, tribal literature uh, which is older than the history of uh, indian civilization what is known in history translation always opens a new scope a wider spectrum for the author to fulfill her or his objective of writing dalit literature is chronicle of dalit life as a whole it is a documentary of dalit oppression anger struggle the sorrow claims etc writing is also political act and it is a part of greater activism dalit literature is a part of dalit movement similarly the tribal literature is also chronicle of tribal life oppression history their culture and their claims when some dalit literature and tribal literature is being translated into english or tribal literature from its orality is written in some other language or any nearby adapted language then it is already proved the objective of that writing or translating is to fight against the power of oppressor and writing is part of their movement most of the tribal communities in india do not have their own script so they have to adapt script from other languages for writing their words uh, to let the world know about themselves and to establish their human rights so in that sense that writing itself for tribal literature is a claim for human right uh, if you see in case of santhali that santhalis are mainly staying in west bengal orissa bihar jharkhand and some portion of chatisgarh and they have adopted the nearby language the neighboring language of the santhal community and they wrote their literature in that language many santhali literature have been written in bangla some have been written in odia some in hindi like this uh, but uh, the tribal literature is mainly oral since th since thousands of years as they do not have their own script as we know few communities among the adivasis or tribal have made their own script like Uh, the santhalis made the olchiki script by pandit raghunath murmu in 1920s others write in the script they are comfortable with in this sense the term tribal literature is by its nature itself is a translation because it is translation from non verbal to verbal we are translating the katha the stories uh, the the poems the music the the script of dance and folk drama their tribal drama script of tribal drama stories etc in writing because all these were in non verbal form 
either in performance or in painting or sculpture and while it is written it is actually coming from non-verbal to verbal and when it is translated it is widely circulated for different communities and the wider readers group reader groups because um, uh, this work i mean from non-verbal to verbal writing tribal literature from non-verbal to verbal itself is translation because in most of the cases the oral traditions are getting documented recorded through writing only and we know when we say literature it is necessarily written so when we are talking about tribal literature it is uh, written so form has been changed there are large number of tribal communities in india sometimes we find different uh, lingua franca for different uh, tribal groups uh, or nearby tribal groups to communicate with each other like the nagamis as a uh, lingua franca among the tribal communities in nagaland and like this we can find the lingua franca among the tribal communities of Manipur, tribal communities of Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, in, in all the areas they have their own lingua franca for communicating. So when we talk about tribal literature in a single literature department, it has tend to be adapted as a monolithic cultural or literary practice in our psyche. However, this happens because of age-old distance among the tribal and non-tribal groups, non-tribal communities. There is huge gap in literary communication between tribal and non-tribal communities. And now question may arise, if the tribal literature is not understood as monolithic, then why we call it tribal literature? This is categorization of literary creation according to the nature of creative expression or according to the similarity in different degree among the literary creation. So there are um, uh, lots of groups of tribal communities and they have their own literature with own flavor. Even the Dalit literature in India, uh, they have differences because Dalit literature in Maharashtra, it comes from uh, from different socio-political background uh, in spite of having the social oppression. Social oppression is common among the Dalit literature from different languages. But um, uh, in spite of having the same kind of, of, of social uh, oppression or social oppression of same nature, there are different kind of political, economic and cultural background from which the Dalit literature in India has been emerged. So the, the emergence of Bengali literature is different than the emergence of Marathi literature or Tamil literature or Kannad, Malayalam or Telugu literature or in the Hindi Dalit literature. So they have their own differences of socio-political, cultural and economic background. So when we talk about Dalit literature, we should not imagine Dalit literature as also uh, um, uh, monolithic. It has its own multi-layers within the discourse of Dalit literature. It, it is multifaceted and tribal literature is also uh, that. So when we are talking about, in this module we are talking about Dalit and tribal literature which are translated into English. Tapan Basu in his introduction to the Katha series of translating caste, he commented the translation of caste as a social institution into an assortment of cultural discourses. So when we are translating Dalit literature, there is a social history, a social background within which the Dalit literature has been emerged. But when we are translating Dalit literature, we are not talking about only the social oppression because it contributes, contributes uh, to the critical discourse about caste and caste related any socio-economic and political uh, matters. And as a literary text, 
that translated the lit literature appears as a cultural pro product and that cultural product contributes its own voice very distinctively in the mainstream culture also because in mainstream culture we are discussing about the Dalit literature and same thing happen, uh, happens for the tribal literature because there is as I mentioned that thousand years old difference between the Dalit uh, tribal and non-tribal groups and because of that the non-tribal groups are so ignorant about the tribal groups and non-tribal groups uh, believe that tribals are uncivilized or they are not modern, they are primitive and all these things, all these issues. But they have their own sense of modernity. And when uh, we are translating tribal literature in English, then it is getting uh, a wide circulation and wide reading. And it itself, this translation becomes a, a product of cultural discourse, an element of cultural discourse. So uh, quite a same thing is happening in, tribal, in case of tribal literature and Dalit literature. Though the socio-political and economic backgrounds are so different of, between Dalit literature and tribal literature. But while we are talking about the translation, English translation of Dalit literature and tribal literature, we are actually talking about the cultural discourses and their contribution to that cultural discourses. Uh, uh, moreover, uh, Tapan Basu commented that treatment of caste theme in all India literary arena. So while it is translated, we are observing that the lit translated Dalit literature and tribal literature as a treatment um, towards the caste problem or the racial problem or the marginal uh, problem of marginal issues uh, from a pan-Indian or Indian literary arena. And when tribal literature or the literatures are translated into English, they are contributing to the cluster of Indian literature, which is actually imagined through English. And, and from that point of view, we, we, we find a most original contribution of literature in, 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 the, in the sphere of Indian literature. Now let us talk about new literature in English and the context of Dalit and tribal literature. Augsburg University um, in their website of English and American study they say that the term new English literatures or NEL in abbreviation refers to the anglophone literatures of Asia, Africa and the Caribbean, Oceania and Canada. The field has direct overlaps with English studies, for instance, by including black and Asian British literatures, as well as travel writing. Via Canadian literatures, it is also closely linked to the field of North American studies, a special focus in the Augsburg New English Literature. So, New English Literature is also a concept which includes a diversity of English literature from different parts of the world. New English, the concept of New English, English literature uh, might be uh, same in everywhere in the world, in different, um, in the academics of different univers universities of different parts of the world. But the thing is that the practice of New English literature is quite different. It depends on the cultural and political uh, problem or necessities of some particular area. When it is about Augsburg University, they are focusing on the Canadian literature or the, um, um, the American literature in, in the arena of New English literature. Now let us talk about the another um, um, university. Um, in both research and teaching, we foreground transnational and transcultural exchange processes and develops historical and contemporary rather than specific national literature. Accordingly, issues of cultural plurality and hybridity as well as literary negotiations of colonization 
and decolonization, migration, diaspora, and social inequality are central lines of inquiry and research. Literary studies are therefore practiced as, as transcultural and comparative analysis of text from a broad variety of national and cultural context. Uh, literature with its uh, specific aesthetic forms is understood as part of larger cultural and societal constellations and connections to other forms of cultural productions. Film, photography, painting are frequently included in our teaching and research. The earlier quotation is from the Augsburg University and now we, we are going to talk about the Warwick University and their focus on new literature in their Department of English and Comparative Literary Studies. Uh, through the medium of English, writers from Africa and Asia today confront a prospectively global audience. This module aims to introduce students to the emergent body of literature being produced by writers and filmmakers from South Asia and to situate it in terms of the historical circumstances that have uh, engendered it and to which it constitutes a response. I unquote. So from the understanding of these two universities, Augsburg and Warwick, these two universities just have been taken for uh, the uh, to put an as an as example of practicing new literature in English. So, so from these two university websites, uh, you know, websites, we, we we can understand that new literature is adapted uh, to study in the English literature department or English and comparative literature department, and the methodology of uh, studying new literature is comparative and they are trying to focus on the marginal literature, the tribal literature, the women literature and the new concurrence what are happening in the, in the literary understanding uh, with, the, with the growing complexities of world politics, culture, uh, religion and etc. And for Workweek University, they are uh, mainly focusing on the South Asian literature and South Asian films to understand the South Asian context. And through this, uh, this uh, new English literature, actually, the, we, we, we can observe the emergence of new category of literature, which is identified as emergent literature. Those literary texts or writers or literary areas what were not much discussed or were not much represented in the world academics. Now those areas or languages or writers are now being represented. Like the South Asian writers and South Asian literatures are represented um, in world academics. And now they are um, being accommodated in the idea, in the Western idea of world literature. I mention it Western idea of world literature because well, every area of world has their own idea or own practice or own geographic location of world literature. So the South Asian literature, the Southeast Asian literature or Eastern Asian literature are getting uh, their space in the Western academics and, and, and uh, these writers are uh, getting the interest of the global leaders, uh, readership global readership in the sense that those literary texts are being circulated in Europe, in America, in Canada, Australia and different parts of South Asia. Earlier, the literary flow only was from the Europe and America to the South and now the South Asia or South is, be, is, is becoming the global South because that literary uh, flow are going towards the Europe and US also. So this uh, new English literature is actually kind of making balance sheet. It's actually balancing the, the, the literary production and, and uh, record of thoughts from uh, different worlds. Europe, uh, US, uh, South Asia, Southeast Asia, Eastern Asia, Australia and, and different uh, any other, other parts of the world like the Middle East, uh, West Asia, all, all these areas. Uh, the literature of all these areas now um, talked in the uh, ac academics. 
And when we are talking about new English literature, we have to uh, keep it in mind that this new English literature is an academic category. Because literature beyond academics, literature has its own life. But when we are talking about new English literature, we are talking about an academic category of literature. Now, uh, let us talk about post-colonial and or new literature. It is another debate whether we call new literature in English as post-colonial literature. But more specifically, what is important here, whether this Dalit and tribal literature is post-colonial literature. Post-colonialism as a school of thought and a pattern of thinking is much debated. Many scholars worldwide uh, claim uh, for the end of post-colonialism. Many scholars emphasize on the limitation of the thought as it by nature cannot be objective critic of colonialism. The text what are referred in the post-colonial in, in post studies were written mostly during colonial rule as the protest against colonial power Post-colonialism offers new interpretation and historicizes those texts. And that is why we need of post-colonialism. All the tribal literature um, was not under the direct influence of colonialism in India especially. Uh, when we call it direct influence, we would like to mean that the modern Indian literature is the creation of direct influence of Europe because those literary genres, literary forms, authors, literary patterns, everything were uh, patronized by the British or European institution or the writers of modern India or 19th century India, they were educated from the colonial institutions. So they adapted the colonial style of writing, they adapted colonial genres, themes, forms, etc. And we can observe the anti-colonial movement in case of culture and literature also was being started during the colonial period. So we can find the use of uh, the, the pre-colonial ideas, thoughts, themes and the styles, methodologies we can find in use of even 19th century um, modern Indian writing. When we are talking that tribal literature was not under direct influence of Europe or under colonialism, we mean that the tribal authors or tribal literature were not patronized by the British institution or European institution. Even there is no formal author of tribal writer, uh, tri tribal literature because it is a production of a community. They are sharing the community stories, they are dancing the, the, the traditional dance or traditional theater, they are talking about their community. So there is no, uh, there is no one author, many authors are contributing. Even when a, a tribal song is written by one person, that one person is also carrying the, the tradition and thoughts from his or her community. And that writing, that indigenous style, that theme, that, that methodology, nothing was influenced by the colonial writing style, colonial methodology, colonial idea of literature, colonial idea of aesthetics, or the colonial form of writing literature. So in that sense, tribal literature was not under direct influence of colonia, colonialism or colonial practices. The colonial institutions did not influence their culture much. So tribal culture is indigenous culture till now. But the modern, the, uh, the mainstream culture, mainstream modern Indian culture is hybrid culture. So something indigenous, something truly new, um, original, um, actually um, emerges from the practice of tribal literature, even from the practice of Dalit literature, though they have adapted the genre, the western genre of novel, of short story, of play, 
of writing autobiography, writing um, European style for writing history, but the theme, but the theme and the life and the society where that Dalitism is coming, it is indigenous, it is not much influenced or much changed because of the colonial practices. So the theme and the cultural elements what are there in Dalit writings are very much originally Indian because those are indigenous and Valchandra Nemade once commented that the in true sense nativism in India is folded by the Dalit and the tribal communities in India. So uh, when we are talking about Dalit literature and tribal literature uh, in English translation, we are not uh, we are not only talking about the new literature in English, but those are truly original writing from India, India's contribution in this category of new literature in English, which is very much original. Moreover, tribal and Dalit literature in their history talks about colonial era and colonial policies, but their main agenda are focusing on the issues related with the Indian state and complexities in Indian politics, society and culture, what have been observed since independence. Because the problems of uh, Dalits and tribal are not the problems which have uh, been originated during colonial rule, but it has its roots in the prehistoric period. The tribal are facing problem because of the tribal and non-tribal conflicts which have been happening since long time, since the long time past of pre-colonial era and during colonial era also they had to suffer the same even in independent era the colonial rules are not abolished but modified. So now what uh, tribals are creating, tribals are talking about, it is also about the complexities what they have they have been uh, facing because of the the anti-tribal policies of Indian politics and and and, and the mainstream cultural domination etc so what in contemporary tribal literature we are getting it is actually against the uh, it is actually about their fight against the Indian state fight against the Indian civil society, Indian mainstream culture, Indian mainstream politics, etc. And so in that sense, the Dalit literature and tribal literature, they are not post-colonial in that sense, but the emergence of very emergence of Dalit literature and tribal literature and uh, the discussion of Dalit literature and tribal literature in mainstream culture is coming might be coming from uh, the post-colonial attitude and post-colonial understanding to represent the marginal, to talk about the marginal, to write about the, the alternative history or talk about alternative modernity. Because Valchandra Nemade also in his nativism uh, talks that, that uh, uh, this uh, indigenous cultural essence can be found in Indian tribal and Dalit communities. So when we are talking and uh, many, many Marxist theories or post-colonial um, theories or the theories to who deal with colonialism and post-colonialism, they speak, uh, they, opine that, they opine that the in true sense, the anti-colonial movement or anti-colonial epistemology can be formed with folk culture, indigenous culture, tribal culture, Dalit culture and from the small unorganized movement what happened in history, the indigenous movements like the movements of Birsha Munda, Sido Kano or the, or the uh, movement for uh, freedom organized by Titu Mir in North 24 Parganas district of West Bengal. Those are not directed by any particular ideology, any particular political ideolo ideology. Those are not much organized. So from that history, from that literary practices, from that cultural practices, we can find the true alternative alternative of colonial epistemology, colonial history, colonial literature and um, we can find uh, the um, true alternative of themes and narratives of our uh, literature which is very much influenced by colonialism. Uh, the critic of colonialism is um, actually uh, the indigenous folk tribal culture of 
colonized subject because such uh, cultures are not influenced or uh, those cultures are uninterrupted. Huh. So the thing is that um, we can uh, provide an alternative of colonial rule and colonial culture through this culture of writing Dalit and tribal literature and circulation and publication and translation of those in English. So in that sense, these are not post-colonial literature in true sense, but these can provide an alternative for anti-colonial uh, practice of epistemology of any kind of any area. Uh, so the voices which are heard from the Dalits and tribals are actually emerging voices in literature to re-establish their claims, rights and raise the question of socio-cultural and political equality. In that sense, this category uh, may be understood as emergent literature in English also. Now the translation and curriculum. Dilip Chavan, professor of English of SRTM University Nandir also observed that English translation of Dalit literature as a contribution to curriculum. Uh, knowledge is not objective and neutral. So when we are uh, translating this, we are, trans we are accommodating, we are adapting, uh, we are actually contributing to the academic, uh, new academic curricula. We are putting those uh, literature in academic curricula and new claims, new voices are uh, being uh, emerged from the academic practices of those literature. I quote from him, uh, translating uh, caste is first and foremost intended to fulfill a pedagogical function. It proposes to bring the issues of caste and its textual representation in contemporary Indian literature into the classroom of universities in India and abroad. The text will be made available to the students for their classroom through English translation of those texts. Now talk about writing or translating Dalit aesthetics or tribal aesthetics. We are talking about Dalit aesthetics and the textbook of Dalit, uh, the, the book on Dalit aesthetic theory is being written by, uh, by Saran Kumar Limbale in Marathi, Dalit Sahitya Che Sandarya Shastra and it is translated into English by uh, renowned scholar Arun Mukherjee as towards aesthetics of Dalit literature. So when we are translating Dalit aesthetics, we are translating tribal aesthetics, actually we are trying to understand what is tribal literature, what is Dalit literature, what is the, what should be the new methodology to criticize, to understand, to analyze Dalit literature or tribal literature. So translating the aesthetics is also an important thing because this provide a separate tool to understand those literary categories because it is not believed that established tools or aesthetics or literary theories or methodologies, methodologies of analysis of literature analysis of mainstream literature can be appropriate can be appropriate to uh, analyze Dalit and tribal literature. Dalit and tribal literature by its nature is multilingual because Dalit literature is being created from from Maharashtra, from Tamil Nadu, from uh, Kerala, from Karnataka, from Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, from Uttar Pradesh, from West Bengal, from different regions. So when we are talking about Dalit literature, these are not produced in any single language. It, these are produced in many languages. And when these are translated into English, these are actually translated into a caste-less language because all other modern Indian languages have their own caste, uh, own caste system. And the language uh, system, uh, uh, we can find the existence of casteist words or words of caste significance in the language system. So when these are translated into English, uh, these texts are translated into a language what does not have caste. But the, our point is that the literature and tribal literature uh, by its nature is multilingual. So multifaceted undercurrents are there in this category. So uh, this, is, this is a caution uh, that we should not understood the literature and tribal literature as monolithic structure, as monolithic literature. Uh, now let us talk about publication of Dalit and tribal literature in English. Uh, Oxford University Press, Warren Black Swan, Navayana, Katha, Speaking Tiger, all these are leading houses publishing Dalit and tribal literature into English. 
we can find that poison bread translation from modern marathi the literature which was published in 1992 and it was edited by arjun dangle anthology of dalit literature of poems uh, which was published uh, by uh, eleanor jelly in 1992 uh, uh, then uh, towards an aesthetics of the lit literature published in 2004 by orient black swan the oxford india anthology of telugu dalit literature oxford india anthology of malayalam dalit literature or the um, uh, oxford india anthology of um, uh, dalit literature from eastern india which is going to be published and oxford indian an uh, anthology of telugu dalit literature and the publication of uh, ck janus mother forest bamas karukku uh, in numerous number of tribal and dalit literature have been published or translated into english and this literature original contribution this literature original contribution from contemporary india which talks about the thousand years old system or civilization or culture or language or beliefs uh, now we are getting all those and those are widely circulated uh, worldwide uh, those are circulated and we can talk about the bhasha research foundation bhasha research organization of gn devi from where the scholastic works on uh, tribals have been happened and the uh, uh, tribal theater group have been emerged and ganesh devi uh, under his leadership so many scholastic works on tribal literature have been happened and this is how the the knowledge the epistemology about the, the tribal literature and the lit literature has been formed the initiative has been uh, taken um, um, on behalf of a uh, few stalwart figures and the translators and the literary practitioners so the publication of dalit and tribal literature is also uh, is important very important uh, to contribute in the discourse of the new english literature this category tribal literature in english um, it is uh, not uh, always true that tribal literature or the lit literatures are always written in other language and then it, these are translated into english but we can find the directly uh, written uh, tribal literature in english that shobhendra shekhar hansda from jharkhand who writes tribal literature in english and he is quite famous now and he very clearly he is able to establish his voice and voice of the community not only the santali community where she he belongs but he is talking on behalf of the tribal or oppressed class people of india and he owned the sahitya academy yuba award and he wrote the famous book of mysterious element of rupi baski and adivasi will not dance which is direct response to the uh, anti tribal political policy of indian government or indian politics in a personal conversation with shobhendra shekhar hasda he says that he is writing in english this is uh, about establishing his claim on the language and the, on the literature and and the whole discourse of politics culture and literature he i quote from his conversation yes a claim on language yes also my stories are thought in santhali i think my stories in santhali or hindi merely a whole was thought in hindi then write those in english you can call my stories santhali stories written in english uh, yes english gives me freedom also english works as a great equalizer it really is our link language had i um, written in santhali or in any other indian language my stories would have been limited to readers in that particular language but because i write in english which so many people can write read and speak now my stories are being uh, read across languages and communities and regions unquote and because of this is writing directly is writing in english he can establish his own claim and he doesn't have any need of translator to be depended on because he is writing directly in english and he is sending his dissent his voices to the world so this is the imp and and he is directly contributing in formation of new english literature from india and he is directly contributing in indian writing in english which is not mainstream but his claim is very significant that he is a santhali story writer but he has adapted the language english 
So now let us conclude our discussion. From this discussion, we have understood the what is new literature in English, what is the uh, area or focus area of new literature is in English, and what is the contribution of the lit and private literature in this uh, um, uh, discourse of new literature in English. For more details, you please consult the e-text, and for all the references, you consult the e-text. Thank you.